You ever hear of Kirbyism? Don't worry, we're not trying to convert you into a religion that speaks of a promised pink savior who will carry us all to Dreamland. A Kirbyism is a game design tool created and coined by Masahiro Sakurai, the creator of the Smash and Kirby games. A Kirbyism is a design choice that all at once makes the game accessible and deep. Sakurai coined the term himself in an interview. He said that a Kirbyism is something that will create a game that could be played differently by any person the way they would want to. Kirby is, in most Smash games, not that strong and not that relevant. But despite Kirby's meta irrelevance in most Smash games, Kirby is at the heart of Smash. Competitively and casually, Smash is a game that's both surprisingly simple and complex. It's a game that can be played in many different, very absurd ways. In other words, it's a game full of Kirbyisms. Probably the biggest being Kirby himself. This little dude is an ultimate beginner character. His multiple jumps and slow speed make him easy for newbies to track, his copy ability gives players the chance to sample new movesets, and even in games where he's pretty darn bad, there's usually some depth to him. But let's start off on a positive note and talk about that one time long, long ago when Kirby was top tier. Hey guys, Bonk here, and by the way, if you want to buff your own Smash skills into the top tier, you should check out ProGuides.com. We've got live coaching, character guides, and, of course, guides from the pros. If you have looked at our site, you'll know we put Kirby in our very lowest tier. But, over two full decades ago, in 1999, that adorable little leader of worlds was actually top three. Kirby has long been one of the best characters in Smash 64 alongside Pikachu and Falcon. If you watched our story of Pikachu, you'll know the little yellow rat's always been number one. But it's not as clear who's better between Falcon and Kirby. Kirby's risen to the second spot here and there largely because of three things and how they all intertwine in his kit. One, fantastic hitboxes. Two, great frame data and three, great mobility. In Smash, mobility is important and all too often determined by sneaky, hidden stats. For example, Kirby has a frame three jump squat tied for the fastest in the game with a few other characters. That means he gets into the air and access to aerials just that bit quicker. He's also tied for second greatest control of his horizontal mobility, making him good at weaving through the air, especially with his six jumps. In other speed stats like initial dash, run speed, speed or fall speed, Kirby is about average. But this little floating orb of endless gluttony isn't just strong for his base mobility stats. No, you need the moveset to go with those stats. And boy does Kirby have a moveset. There are maybe two moves in Kirby's kit that aren't great, his up air and his up special. Most of Kirby's other moves are really quick to start up, last surprisingly long, and have ridiculous hitboxes. Combined with Kirby's aerial mobility, 64's Kirby is way better at spacing and fighting air-to-air -air than you'd think. Another cool thing about Kirby is that his aerials often have a strong and weak hit depending on when they land. Earlier hits are usually stronger, and later are weaker. The strong hits are nice because they can kill, and weak hits are nice because they can combo or lead into a killing blow. Each aerial also serves a separate purpose, giving Kirby a lot of strength in the air. Forward air is a great combo starter, down air is good for combos, great for edge guards, and one of the best shield pressure tools in the game, back air is a good kill option and edge guard tool, and neutral air is great to stuff out an opponent's option. Kirby's grounded options are pretty good too. Down tilt can make Kirby low profile other hitboxes and has a very big hitbox that can cover the ledge. And then there's up tilt. Up tilt is one of the best grounded options out there. It combos into itself and into aerials at a lot of percents. It's fast and does a lot of shield damage, so it shield breaks too. And it has an insanely large hitbox that would make any reasonable person scared of the monstrous feet hiding inside Kirby's shoes. Kirby's up tilt gets even better with Smash 64's unique pivot system, which allows Kirby to pivot in the middle of combos to get just the right hit of up tilt. Kirby's main weakness is that he's pretty easy to combo, especially vertically, and his recovery isn't the best. His up special is often a death sentence against good players. While he does have a lot of jumps and good aerial mobility, his jumps don't go that high, so it's hard for Sakurai's first son to land. Plus, there's no air dodging to ledge in 64. In the earlier days of the 64 meta, Kirby's recovery looked particularly weak. Still, Kirby was a top three character in results and opinion during 64's earlier competitive eras.
It was partially due to the first hugely prominent Kirby main, Tatumon, from Japan. Tatumon won a lot of Japan's major tournaments from 2006 to 2008, often beating Prince for the top spot. Tatumon was particularly good at pinning down and punishing his opponents using Kirby's oppressive hitboxes, and also for getting some insanely strong early KOs. As the 64 meta advanced, Tatumon stopped competing as much and eventually stepped back from the scene. In his place rose two more very prominent Kirby mains, Moyashi and Kikoshi. Moyashi and Kikoshi would both travel more and prove themselves outside of Japan. Kikoshi's biggest win would come at Apex 2013, where he'd be Isaiah's insanely polished Mario. It was a very back-and-forth set where Isaiah's edgeguards and combos shined. However, Kikoshi took back momentum by pushing Kirby's punish game to the limit, regularly getting huge rewards off of one opening. Isaiah nearly clutched it out, but Kikoshi closed it with a fair to F-Smash. Kikoshi hadn't just won one of 64's biggest tournaments. He'd beaten Super Boom Fan and Isaiah, two of 64's biggest competitors. Kikoshi brought an even more fluid movement to Kirby, which in turn brought the Little Pink Puffball's terrifying touch of death power. Moyashi would also nearly defeat Isaiah at the next Apex, but lose in the bracket reset. In recent times, Japan has produced yet another dominant Kirby duo, Fukuro and KYSK, pronounced Kiyoshiki. Fukuro and Kiyoshiki both had been doing well in Japan for a while. Fukuro popped off in 2017 when he traveled to more tournaments in the US. He went on a winning streak and won Smash 64's biggest modern tournament series, Super Smash Con. That put him at rank 1 in 2017. Fukuro did this by using Kirby's aerials as landing tools. Even great Japanese Kirby's in the past, like Hikoshi, didn't do this as well as Fukuro. Fukuro recognized that Kirby's up special was so reactable that it could only be a mix-up at best. It was much better to threaten the ledge with a fair or a dare. These moves lasted so long that they were hard to punish. And if you missed the punish window and got hit, there was a good chance Kirby could Z-cancel and counter hit. That counter hit could easily knock you straight out of Dreamland. In 2018 and 19, Fukuro wouldn't compete as much. Here, Kiyoshiki stepped up. In 2019, he went on a run that would surpass Fukuro's. He'd win Genesis, Kanto, Japan's major, and Super Smash Con. Most impressively, he'd beat Super Boom Fan and Kero Kerapi's Pikachu using Kirby. That was huge given how rough the Pikachu matchup is for Kirby. However, he did break out the Captain Falcon to beat Wario's Pikachu in an insane three-stock comeback. Regardless, the run was massive and has basically cemented Kiyoshiki as the current world's best 64 player. It also got the man a sponsorship and a nice fan following. Even after Kiyoshiki's wins, Pikachu is still seen as Kirby's toughest matchup. Many of the great American Kirby players like Kara Kerapi, Isaiah, and Super Boom Fan use Kirby as a co-main or secondary for that reason. They can go Falcon for Pikachu, then they can use Kirby to cover the Captain Falcon matchup. It's a nuanced rock-paper-scissors where Kirby beats Falcon, beats Pikachu, beats Kirby... you get the idea. Kirby had an incredible lineage of great players in 64, one that may even outstrip Pikachu's. But, like a tiny pink Icarus that flew too close to the sun, Kirby would be punished for reaching the highest heights. By which we mean he'd get nerfed so hard in Melee that he'd never fully recover. Melee wrecked Kirby's mobility. In Melee, Kirby has one of the slowest air speeds and fast fall timings. He's also pretty slow on the ground, below average in initial dash and run speed. Kirby is actually so slow that rolling is a weirdly efficient movement option for him. The slow air speed is particularly rough, making him easy to edge guard. To make matters worse, a lot of his moves are pretty subpar too. He doesn't really have good high damage and knockback kill moves, which is really bad given crouch canceling. He over relies on getting a smash attack read or a gimp. That makes him pretty ineffective against the floaty characters who can avoid his edgeguards. Worst of all, Kirby's back and forward throws are flat out broken and can be DI'd out of entirely. That's really brutal, as even bad throws can be good for putting an opponent where you want them. But it's not all bad for the little pink blob, man. Kirby's ground game is surprisingly decent. His grab range sucks, but his tilts are all surprisingly useful and fast. His combo game isn't too bad either. A good Kirby can surprise a spacey or two with a mix of combos and edgeguards. Kirby can really surprise unsuspecting Falcons and Sheiks as he can low-profile their grabs and aerials. 
In the very early days of Melee, Crazy Kirby Kid got shockingly good results with Kirby, beating very strong players like Rob Money and getting fifth at an Evo qualifier. But it was a time when people were less aware of Kirby's cheese and many top tiers were unoptimized. Triple R, Melee's best modern era Kirby, was notable for surprising people with Kirby's few strengths. He got an impressive 25th at Smash and Splash 2, a major tournament. Triple R has also gotten some notable wins on players like Absent Page. However, even the best Melee Kirby will crumble against a top tier who knows the matchup. Kirby was in contention for worst in the game for a while, but luckily the little dude's charisma got him a decent player base. And those players made an effective argument for him being, you know, at least better than Bowser in Zelda. Melee Kirby isn't important to the meta, but is important for understanding Kirby in Smash. The 64 Kirby with broken, very long-lasting hitboxes would never see the light of day again. The Melee Kirby with poor mobility, underwhelming hits, and a lot of cheesy tactics would become the norm. In Brawl, Nintendo made sure Kirby wouldn't be broken like he was in 64, but they realized he probably shouldn't be literally broken like he was in Melee. Kirby was solidly in mid-tier for most of Brawl's lifespan. The Gluttony Orb had retained the combos in solid ground game from Melee, but now he had a longer grab and much better grab game. Kirby could also start combos off of his up air, giving the little dude some more versatility to his combo game and approaches. His back air was also a genuinely good move that gave him another good edgeguard tool on top of down air, and his forward smash got buffed into one of the better raw kill options in the game. Down tilt could also trip opponents, setting up for an F smash. Kirby's ability to pancake during down tilt helped him out in some useful matchups, like against Falco. Kirby's solid follow-ups and early kill options scored him a spot in high tier in the early meta. A number of Kirby mains were doing well, but the best was, surprisingly, Chudat. The legendary Wobbler from Melee did pick Ice Climbers here and there, but he mostly went with Kirby and had a number of strong performances and good wins early on. As the meta wore on, Kirby dropped significantly, falling into mid-tier. This was because none of Kirby's aggression was all that safe. Chudat is maybe one of the most patient, and campy, players in Smash history, so he could wait for his opponent to approach. But if a Meta Knight player was just as patient, they could easily wait out Kirby's attack, then punish, which Mewtwo King started doing to Chudat. Other fast characters could abuse Kirby's lack of safe aggression as well. To make matters worse, Kirby's disadvantage was still a major weakness. While Kirby was far from spectacular, he did have some fun cheese potential to him, which Chudat often showcased, especially with his Project M Kirby. Aside from cheese, Chudat did get Kirby a pretty big, pretty hype win at Glitch 2 in 2016. Whatever meager success the plucky little puffball got in Brawl would be erased in Smash 4. Kirby actually kept quite a few strengths from Brawl. His back air was still strong, and he still had some potent kill options and nice combos. Some changes were even pretty helpful. Universal buffs to dodges and rolls certainly helped his perpetually rough disadvantage state. Multi-hits chained together more reliably and couldn't be SDI'd as effectively as in Brawl, so Kirby's multi-hit aerials like down air could more consistently link into things. Up throw could kill now, Kirby was faster on the ground, and so on. Initially, Kirby even looked like he might be another fun niche mid-tier like in Brawl. Rishi, formerly known as Smash God, got good results with the character alongside Supergirl Kells and Triple R. Rishi notably got 13th at Olympus, forcing Larry Lur to switch off of Fox. However, Triple R would stop playing as often, and Rishi and Supergirl Kells would leave the little friend-shaped ball behind. As the meta wore on, it became clearer and clearer that Kirby didn't actually fit well inside it. Even in his weakest iterations, Kirby's edgeguarding has been a strength. So Smash 4's great recoveries indirectly nerfed Kirby. While Kirby got a bit faster on the ground, it wasn't by nearly enough, and he got slower in the air compared to the rest of the cast. That meant opponents could just run away from him and camp him out. Not to mention, from Brawl to 4, he'd taken big hits to his hitboxes, and the game got a lot more disjoints. So Kirby often got walled out. Worst of all, Kirby has always suffered from vertical combos due to his floatiness. And, uh... That may be the absolute worst weakness possible in Smash 4. This little dude got juggled easily in a game where juggling was king. Kirby eventually sunk into the depths of low tier. However, he still had his moments and weird uses. 
Komoda, a newcomer to Kirby, brought some life to the character in 2017. At Frostbite, a huge major, he'd place 33rd and beat Smash 4's best Mario along the way. The upset was colossal and put Kirby on the radar for a while. If nothing else, as a counterpick to Fox and Mario, two popular characters. Kirby also got a lot of buffs in Smash 4, but they were often to grounded kill options, which didn't really address his core issues. Although he ended the game in a pretty sad state, Kirby had a surprisingly good player base headed into Ultimate. Komoda in the US, Jisui Shouk in Europe, and Uto in Japan. They'd all carry the Kirby torch from Smash 4 into Ultimate. Top tier or low tier, buffed or nerfed, Kirby is always charismatic. And fittingly, he's a simple character with a classic fighting game feel to him. At the very beginning of Ultimate, Kirby somehow got even worse. He was a very common candidate for the worst character in the game, fighting for the spot with Little Mac. He carried the same flaws he's long had in the series. His hitboxes are too small, so he gets walled out. His speed is pretty poor, so he can't approach that well and can be camped. Despite several jumps, his recovery still isn't very good because his airspeed and his up special aren't great. He's got some nice combos and he's got some nice aerials and tilts, but they are just too simple, too small, and too lackluster to make him meta-relevant. In the early meta especially, Kirby really suffered from poor frame data and low kill power. The only real saving grace he got from Ultimate's engine was low profiling. Kirby could now duck under even more hitboxes than before. Since down tilt is probably his biggest grounded opener, it was easy enough to duck and counter hit or open an opponent up. But he was a consensus bottom tier for a while. And in the early days, Kirby mains did struggle to get notable results. Komodo would nearly repeat history at Frostbite 2019, almost upsetting Void. But in the end, Void figured out the matchup in time. Uto and a Kirby main named Farakuma were both doing about the same in Japan. In Europe, Jisui Shouk would be Kirby's best hope, regularly beating top European competitors and getting strong results at big tournaments. Fortunately, Ultimate didn't intend to leave Kirby at the bottom of the barrel. They buffed the character across several patches. 3.0 and earlier, Kirby got some solid buffs to kill power. Dash attack and up smash would both be made into better kill options. Then, in 6.0, Nintendo addressed Kirby's poor frame data, giving his jab, neutral air, up air, and inhale startup buffs. Up Smash, Up Air, and Neutral Air all got knockback buffs as well. The gradual buff pattern matched Kirby's results pattern as well. Uto would get consistently good placings at Japan's C-tiers. Farakuma would score some big upsets including one on Atelier, which got him 17th at a Japanese A-tier event. Just we Shouk was quietly dominating his region and looking like a top player in Europe. He'd get 33rd at Albion 4, Europe's biggest tournament at the time. In 2020, Just we Shouk would really heat up and get second at a European C tier. But even more notably, he beat Gluttony, Europe's best player and a top 10 player in the world. To date, it's Kirby's biggest win. Just we Shouk's strong pre-quarantine performance got him into Orion Rank's 2020 offline power rankings as well at 93rd. It may not be much for some characters, but it's kind of the best Kirby's had since Chudat and Brawl, so since 2014. Very recently, Ron, the Japanese Yoshi main, picked up Kirby and won a pretty big online tournament using mostly Kirby, beating names like Zachary and Shutone. That could arguably be Kirby's biggest win, but not only was it an online tournament, Shutone and Zachary didn't play their mains. So the win, while still big, does come with asterisks. Jisui Shouk is probably the most technical Kirby. He plays the pretty slow character in a fast, responsive way that's pretty cool to see. He makes up for Kirby's pretty bad disadvantage state by getting the most in advantage, often using deceptive aerials to provoke his opponent into a whiff, which he then punishes with a fast F-Smash or a nice edge guard. However, patient top players like MKLeo and Glutiny regularly tear the strategy apart. Truth be told, Kirby's old flaws remain in Ultimate. Kirby's approach is still difficult given his speed, Kirby's disadvantage is still pretty rough too, and Kirby struggles even more against a cast loaded with disjoints, still keeping him low tier in a lot of people's minds. Interestingly, Kirby got even more great buffs in patch 8.0, but, well, they're more knockback and frame data buffs, so they don't quite help with his weaknesses. They also got rid of some of Kirby's more complex, powerful combos by buffing his fair's knockback. 
The 8.0 buffs raise a tough question for Kirby in general. Is Kirby too much of a Kirbyism? Is Kirby too simple and too accessible to be powerful? Many of Ultimate's best characters are technically demanding, even the ones that get memed on. Palutena may be an easy character to pick up, but she still demands tight window rars and pivots and platform cancels. Jabrar back airs look easy when Tweak and Goblin do them, but they can be a challenge even for intermediate players to execute. Kirby is slow and floaty in part so beginners can keep track of him. His moves are simple and straightforward so beginners easily see what they do. His kit has surprising depth, but it is, at the end of the day, pretty straightforward. And to fit the identity that Kirby has always had, his kit probably should be this way. Funny as it would be for Kirby to have his 64 hitboxes and be as fast as Falcon on the ground and Puff in the air, it'd really mismatch his Dreamland identity. And it'd be disorienting for new players. Kirby isn't just known for his simplicity, he's incredibly beloved for it. So it raises the question, as Smash adds more and more mechanics and characters, can simple little Kirby keep up? Can Kirby return to what he was in 64 and keep his identity? And should he? There is virtue in being the beginner character. There's charm in it. Would we all love Kirby as much as we do if he wasn't the plucky low-tier character he is? Kirby's questions are, in some ways, Smash's questions. Because Smash is driven by Sakurai's Kirbyisms, each game we find Nintendo's removed some kind of advanced technique whether it's wave dashing, or the Dacus, or the perfect pivot. But we also find, with each game, a growing audience and player base for Smash. Its simplicity and accessibility is a delicate dance with complexity and depth. Sometimes it's one in favor of the other, and sometimes it's both blending together. It's a strange push and pull at the heart of Kirby and Smash.